behalf of the children's church this morning, we are asking for ministers. We are asking for ministers. Now, this is what happened to us. When the church branched out, a lot of ministers left, but not many children left. <laughs> so ministers left, but a lot of children are still here. And so where we used to have one minister to four children, we now have one minister to like 15 children. So you go there, they are crying all over the place. We need ministers. Now we want to begin by asking parents, parents to volunteer. God has already given you the gift of ministering to children. You don't even need to pray for it. You are already gifted if you are a parent. We want you to come and help us. And we'll make it easy for you. We'll have a roster. You come once a month. You don't have to be there every Sunday. Once a month, you come and help us. We'll have a table outside. Please go and register. Give us your phone number and let's work with you. God needs you in the children's church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And finally, I want to just thank you for uh, coming together and helping us to celebrate our woman of God, our pastor, last week. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Uh, from the report at the end of that day, I want to confirm to you that she was happy because she danced. <laughs> she danced until she was tired and went to the room to sleep. Thank you. Thank you for helping us to celebrate our woman of God. Some of you forget to send her a gift. You can still do that. You can still do that. The gift is open to the next birthday. Uh, so bring your gift and celebrate our woman of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will raise men to celebrate you. When it is your time, men will celebrate you. Glory to God. Did you come with your Bibles this morning? You know what I'm about to say. Okay, so let me see it, since you know. Somebody came to my office last week. He said, Pastor, those your beautiful Bible. I just want to see it. I said, you didn't ask for it in church. You are coming here to see the beautiful Bible. Now, for those of you who don't come to church with Bibles, I have Bibles at the back. If you didn't come with your own, the ushers will give you one, and then at the end of the service, you leave it for me so that I can give it to another person next week. So the rest of us, let me see your Bibles. Just wave it. Just wave it. Say, so this is my Bible. This morning, I will be taught from it. My life will not be the same again. I am not a forgetful hearer. I am a doer of God's word. In Jesus' name. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. How many of us were in church last Sunday? Awesome. Awesome. I've listened to last Sunday's message, first and second service, three times each. I mean, there were many things I didn't hear in church that I get to hear. as how It was too good. It was too good. So I ask that you go and listen to it again. It was packed with truth and with humor. I mean, Reverend Bayo is good. It was a good sermon. Uh, and, and, and today we are continuing on that same path. And so it will be like last week, part two. The company of them that believe. But what I'm adding today is that fire in the company. The company of them that believe. Fire in the company. Somebody say fire. fire. Glory to God. Mark chapter three. Mark Chapter 3, Matthew, Mark, chapter 3. If you are there, say, I am there. I'll read from verse 13. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. Tell your neighbor, those he wanted. He called. Turn to the other person and say, you are here. Because he wants you. He has called you. Tell them he has called you. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him. And that he might send them out to preach. And to have power 
to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. First, he called them to himself to be with him. But the reason he called them to be with him is so that he can send them out to preach, to heal, and to cast out demons. Somebody say, I am called to be with Jesus so that he can send me to preach, to heal, and to cast out demons. Acts chapter 4. We read this last week and I'm reading it again. Acts chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own companion or company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nations rage? And the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, we are gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaking. I'm trusting God that today we will pray and this place will shake. And everything in you, around you, that is not of God will be shaken off into the fire in the name of Jesus. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke with the word of God with boldness. Somebody said they spoke with boldness. I will speak with boldness. Leviticus 6, 12. I want that on the screen. Leviticus 6, 12. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and let the burnt offering in order on it and he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offering verse 13 a fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never go out somebody said the fire shall never go out now in this context it was physical fire but that is the old testament in our context the altar is now our heart and what god is saying is that there should be fire in our hearts and that the fire in our hearts should never go out. Somebody said, there is fire in my heart and that fire will never go out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask this morning for the outpouring of your spirit and of your fire upon everyone seated here because you called us to yourself because you wanted us. Baptize us afresh this morning with your fire and send us out of here to preach, to heal, and to cast out demons. Everyone here receives that grace right now. Because we have asked in no other name but the name of Jesus. I said today we are still saying the same thing we said last Sunday. The company of them that believe. But this morning I'm talking about fire in the company. Somebody say fire in our midst. Fire. In our midst. When we say fire, fire is an important element in the Christian life. When we say fire, we are talking about passion. When we say fire, we are talking about zeal. When we say fire, we are talking about hunger. When we say fire, we are talking about that that compels us to action. If you are seated here as a child of God and you have not gotten anybody saved this year and you have not spoken to anybody this year and your devotional life is up and down, there is no fire. 
What it means is that your fire has dimmed. But by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will receive fresh fire today. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to know that without fire, we cannot successfully execute the Christian faith. It is not possible. So everyone needs the fire. When Jesus was living, he told the disciples, don't do anything. Just wait. Let me send the fire before you start the work. And so he left. After like 50 days, the Bible says they were in one accord, just as we are this morning in the upper room. And the fire fell upon everyone. The Bible says it was on their head like cloven tongues of fire. And boom, they received power. And says, now you have received power. Go witness. Somebody said, this morning, I will be baptized with fresh fire. And so where we read says that he called them to be with him. Why? Because when they are with him, he transmits fire and power. And then after a while, he will send them out. We've been with him for too long. It's time to go out. It's time to go preach. It's time to go heal. It's time to go cast out devils. I want you to know that healing is not for pastors alone. Healing is not for Dickens alone. Healing is for every born again child of God. He says, these signs shall follow those who believe. Not these signs shall follow pastors. These signs shall follow those who believe. Let me see your hands. Say, my hands are the hands of Jesus. These hands are anointed to heal the sick in the name of Jesus. He said, these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. He said, they lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. I want you to know that you are anointed to heal. Just go and do it boldly. That's many years ago. <laughs> I was trying to understand this place. And so one day, Pastor Koti was supposed to go and pray for somebody who had not walked, became sick, lost their functions. And he said, he cannot go. I should go and pray for the person. I said, no. He said, no, I must go. I said, no, I'm not going. He said, you must go. <laughs> now, Pastor Koti has a way of, Pastor Koti was the one that forced me to go and do my first burial. I was just coming out of church Friday evening. He said, tomorrow you are doing a burial. I said, no, I won't do it. He said, you will do it. <laughs> he says, you will go there and you pray for him in the name of the Lord and leave the rest for God. I think it was around zone four. And I went there when I saw the man, my heart fell. And so I said, Pastor Koti said, I should come and greet you. <laughs> Pastor Koti said, I should come and greet you. We are together in the office. I'm one of his uh, assistants. He said, I should come and greet you to ask you how you are doing. And then I should just, uh, just greet you. <laughs> so I finished greeting him. I said, oh, before I go, can we just, just pray? And we prayed. And I left. As I was going out, I heard shout. And the man came out. Walking, walking, walking. I say, ooh, this thing works. This thing works. So every one of us is anointed with fire. And with fire is power. Somebody say, with fire is power. And so this person said, because of the anointing that they exercised, they were persecuted. And then when they were let go, they went back to their company. I want you to know that Nigeria is amongst the most persecuted countries in the world right now. Our dear country is amongst the most persecuted countries in the world. According to the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, Nigeria is number nine. According to another site, 50, the top 50 countries where Christians are worst persecuted, Nigeria is number nine after Iran. And so there's persecution here. But can I tell you the truth? It's not new. It's not new. Somebody say it's not new. It happened to them. The Bible says they were persecuted, beaten. But after they were let go, they went back to their company. It is God's will that every child of God must belong to the company of believers. And so if you are here and you are living in isolation, that is not the will of God. Every child of God must belong to the company of believers. Belong to a local church. Belong to a care group. Belong to a ministry. 
belong to a prayer group, belong to the women's fellowship. Every child of God must have a company that they go to every time they are persecuted. Why? Because on this side of heaven, persecution will not stop. It will continue. Why? So they can stop us, but we cannot be stopped. Somebody said, I cannot be stopped. And so they responded. And last week we heard about the four responses. How did they respond? That is how we should respond. They were persecuted, but they responded by worshiping God. In the face of this persecution, it is time to worship God the more. It is time to worship God the more. The more they persecute us, the more we worship God. The more they persecute us, the more we worship God. The more they persecute us, the more we worship God. And after a while, they say, these people cannot be stopped. Somebody say, I will worship God. That was their response. That must be our response. They will keep persecuting us, but we will keep worshiping God. Number two, they affirm God's supremacy over the rage of the hidden. They say, why are they gathered in vain? I want you to know that whatever gathering, whatever conspiracy against us, it is going to be in vain. It is going to be in vain. It is going to be in vain. There is no man, there is no institution that has been able to stop the church of the living God. And no man, no institution will be able to stop this, this institution of Christ. There is no Boko Haram, there is no Ishwab, there is no Islamic body that will be able to stop the body of Christ. The church of Christ is marching on and the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. Somebody rise on your feet and say hallelujah. But you know those who will stand. It's you that will stand. It's you that will stand. It's you that will stand. It's me that will stand. We will stand for Christ. And nothing will stop us from going on. Please you may be seated. Please you may be seated. So they went back to their company. And affirmed the supremacy of Christ. There is no man born on the earth. That can stand against the purposes of God. No man. You see, he sits and laughs. There can be bugaying and carrying shoulder. He just, oh yes, that, that bugatin is a pride thing. There can be bugaying up and down. If you say your hand stay like that, it will stay like that. Don't you know that? No man. No man. No man. No institution. So they affirmed his supremacy. They didn't bother about the rage. So they went back together. I said, we've seen them. They are persecuting us. What we are asking is give us boldness. Yes. We are not stopping. Just give us boldness to continue. Amen. And as we continue, let there be signs and wonders. And God answered. And God will answer us. We are going to be seeing signs and wonders. We are going to be seeing signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of them will get sick and call you to their homes. And you will lay hands on them and they will be healed. In the name of Jesus, we will deliver their children from addictions. In the name of Jesus. They confessed that God is sovereign. You see, why they thought <laughs> that they killed Jesus? What they didn't know that in killing Jesus, they were fulfilling a script. Sovereignty and God was able to take all things and cause it together. Who will kill Jesus? Is it the Christian that should kill Jesus? No. They thought they were killing him. But it was in his death that the power was released. Can I speak over you? Every man, every woman, every conspiracy right now against you, thinking that they are doing you in by the authority in the name of Jesus, all of that will be for your promotion. All of that will be for your greatness. Somebody who believes, say amen. amen. And on top of all of that, they reaffirmed their missionary task. They said, now we are more committed. And that is what I came to charge us. Even in the face of this conspiracy, in the face of this persecution, it's time to reaffirm our commitment to missions, our commitment to evangelism, our commitment to soul winning. That is how they responded. The Bible says those things were written so that we can learn. Glory to God. So we will worship God. We will affirm his supremacy. We will confess his sovereignty. And we will reaffirm our commitment to missionary 
task, no matter the persecution. Somebody say, I will worship God. I will continue to affirm his supremacy over the rage of the hidden. I will keep confessing his sovereignty and I am committed to my missionary task. I preach, I heal, and I cast out demons. Say it like you believe. Say, I preach, I heal, and I cast out demons. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. And so last week we looked at some of the features, the distinctive features, the things that set them apart. Those are the same things that will set us apart. You see, as I was looking at this sermon on last Sunday, it ties in with our Christian character. We said the Christian characters are the features that set us apart. And then Uncle Bayo brought it last week again and said it in another way. What are the things that will set us apart? Passion for God. Passion after God. Passion after the things of God. Do you pursue God like you pursue contracts? Don't, don't, don't answer, just keep the answer. Do you pursue God like you pursue your wife? Do you pursue God that you, like you pursue your, 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 your career? If the answer is no, something is wrong. If the answer is no, something is wrong. God must be our priority pursuit. And then after God, these other things. And so it's a call to reorder our priorities. That is the beginning of the fire. That is the beginning of the fire. We have received the Holy Spirit. As we do these things, the fire will be triggered. Let's become passionate for God. Let the zeal for God, the zeal for the house of God, the zeal for the things of God, let it consume us. Let us think about the things of God. Let us think about those who are losing their lives daily, not knowing where they are going. And let us be consumed with passion for the things of God. That is what God wants us to do. We are the church. There is no other plan. We are his plan. We are his plan A. We are his plan B. We are his plan C. We are his plan Z. No other plan. Help me tell your neighbor, no other plan. Tell the other one, you are his plan. And so we must become passionate. The time for lukewarm Christianity is over. Let everybody know that you are a Christian. Let the fire burn. Where a city is set on the hill, we are light. We cannot be hidden. Say, I cannot be hidden. It's time to be passionate. Tell your neighbor, it's time to be passionate. The way we pursued this many years ago, I was running kitty cat around the town for something. I think I was, I was driving one old car that is always breaking down. The way I was passionately looking around to fix it, God said, calm down, calm down. My son, Wilson, if you will be passionate for me, the way you are passionate for this thing, I will bless you. Can I tell you the truth? If we will calm down and pursue him, the way we are pursuing these things, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. Somebody say, I'm committed to the kingdom. Fresh fire upon me in Jesus' name. It's time to become passionate. In their passion, they loved God. They loved God. If you love somebody, you will give to them. What will you give to them? You will give them yourself. You will give them yourself. And yourself is your time, your talent, your treasure. If you love God, you will spend time with God. Anytime there's an opportunity to sit around him, to sit with his people, you will be happy to be there. When you wake up, you will sit before him and do your devotions. You will listen to his words. If we love God, we will give to him without complaining. If we love God, we will serve. They loved the Lord and they showed it. They loved the Lord to where they didn't count their life as nothing. And that is what God wants us to be. If you are willing to lose your life for Jesus, you will keep it. Amen. But when you are not willing to lose your life for Jesus, you will lose it. Are you willing? Will you be willing? To lose your life for Jesus. What is it, self? Absent in the body. Shh. Present with the Lord. With Christ.
crowns and glory. Let's move from lip service love to heart and action love. Let's love God with all our heart, with all our minds, and with all our action. Let it show in our bank account. Let it show in our time allocation. Let it show in our priorities. They loved the Lord and they showed it. They didn't care for their lives, but you know what? They were preserved. They were preserved. Church, it's time for us to love God. It's time for us to love God. Spending time with him in our personal devotions. We cannot say that enough. And we cannot oversay it. Spending time. Last week, the man of God says, for him in their family, is no devotion, no breakfast. I thought that was powerful. No devotions, no breakfast. My children, I'll see them sometimes in the morning. They'll, you just see them, boom, in the kitchen. Have you done your breakfast? And I say, let me eat first. I say, no, go back. <laughs> no breakfast, no devotions, no breakfast. We won't say it like that, but you know what we mean. That as your eyes open in the morning, as you put your leg off the bed, God, for in the beginning, God. Let God be the, be the beginning and let God be the end. Church, it's time for us to love the Lord. What else did they do? They love God's people. You cannot love God and not love his children. How can you say you love Pastor Wilson and when you see dogs that you want to kill her? You are a hypocrite. Scripture says, how can you say you love God that you have not seen? And hate the human beings that you can see. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And then when I see Mr. Ode, I want to kill him. It's hypocrisy. Every man is made in the image and the likeness of God. And especially believers, they are special. So if you say you love God, you must love the body. And how do you show this love? Forgiveness. Tolerance. We must live in forgiveness. There may be two people here now who are not talking to each other. That is not Christianity. That will hinder the fire. The fire we are looking for cannot flow in the place of bitterness and unforgiveness. Love God's people. Love his house. Anybody that says, I'm a Christian, love them. And any human being that looks like a human being, love them. But love the Christians more. Because we belong to the same family. Glory to God. Glory to God. And can I go further? Love every child of God. Love people from living faith. Love people from Christ's embassy. Love people from redeemed. I mean, I've heard stories of people with stickers. I love the Lord. I belong to so, so. And on Sunday morning, pastor, on Sunday morning when they are going to church, churches that are on the same street, they will stop. Where are you going? Family worship center. They just drive off. Because you are not going to live in faith. We are children of God. In heaven, there will be no family worship center. In heaven, there will be no redeemed. In heaven, it will be the body of Christ. Love God, love his children. And every man seated here right now is your brother, is your sister, if they are born again. Love them like you love your own. Glory to God. Somebody give God praise. This is fire falling already. This is fire falling. So they had passion after God. They were hungry for God. They were zealous for God. They loved the Lord, not minding whatever happens to them. They love God's people. They love his house. A new commandment I give to you, love one another. Love one another as I have loved you. It's time to love again. And for us, it's a double requirement because it's our brand. It's our local brand. Love is our brand. There should be no family worship center person who has not forgiven another person and walking in unforgiveness. There should not be any family worship center person like that. No. No, not to even talk about husband and wife not talking and wearing a coat to church. It's hypocrisy. <laughs> hypocrisy. Fire! 
They had a pilgrim's mentality. They had a pilgrim's mentality. Oh, what an awesome illustration last week. Pilgrim's mentality. He said, what if I was coming to preach for one hour and I come with a trailer load of goody goodies? What is the meaning of that? We must come to a place. As we desire to have good things, we must separate our hearts from good things. Let me say it again. We must come to a place as we desire to have the good things of life. Separate our hearts from good things. We are pilgrims. We are pilgrims. We are pilgrims. We are not here to stay. We are passing through. This is not our home. We are passing through. One day you will be dead. One day I will be dead. One day you will be in a casket. One day I will be in a casket. Do well. 100 years. Do well. 120 years. But we will leave. This is not our permanent quarters. So be careful how your heart is glued to things. It's glued to things. It's glued to things. It hinders fire. As we ask for fire, we must live like pilgrims with the determination that when I leave, I will leave a legacy behind. Look at where we are today. A man and his wife had God came back from the place that many of us are dying to go to come and sacrifice. Look at the number of believers here today. We must determine. We must determine to live beyond ourselves and to realize at all times that one day I won't be here. And when I'm not here, what am I leaving behind? What am I leaving behind? The pilgrim's mentality this world, truly, truly, is not our home. It's not our home. It's not our home. As I'm talking to you right now, I have two dear people's bodies in the mortuary. I have an auntie in the mortuary. I have my mother-in-law in the mortuary. They were here some weeks ago. They are not here again. They are not here again. They are not here again. We can claim long life as much as we want anoint ourselves with oil and drink the oil. But nobody knows. Our lives are like vapors. It's here now. It disappears. But what matters is that when you are called up yonder, what are you leaving behind? How are we living right now? As we look towards God to bless us with the good things so that we can be a blessing, we must remove the attachment of our hearts to things. The lived like pilgrims. That is why they were able to do the things they did. I, was, I began to read yesterday about missionaries that brought these things to Nigeria. They came at 22, 23, 19, 25. How will somebody leave New Jersey in America in 1920 and come to Khartoum in, in uh, this place? How will somebody live in 1840-something and come and... Can you imagine how Calabar was in 18-something? They left everything. They left the luxuries of life. They left the beautiful things of life for the cause of Jesus. That is why we are here today. That is why we are here today. What are we living for the next generation? Will this thing die in our hands? Somebody say, God forbid. Somebody say, God forbid. We must live like pilgrims. There were people of the world. The people of the world. Can I tell you the truth? There is no way you can be built up without the knowledge of the world. This is it. Let me see your Bible again. Raise your Bible. Raise your Bible. Say, this is it. Say, this is it. This world is our life. When you see people shaking in the face of things, they don't have this. This is it. I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build. To build. This is what makes you a strong man, a strong woman. Issues will come. If you find any Christian anywhere, they are either coming out of one issue or heading towards another one. What makes them stand? And if possible, Buga. 
is the amount of word that they have. It's time to dig our feet, dig our eyes, dig our ears in the world. For in this world is life. This is our strength. The more of it you have, the strength. The more strength. You say you err because you know not the scriptures. It's time for us. This is fire. This is the wood. This is fire. This is fuel for fire. They were people of the world. Church, it's time to be a people of the world. We must become a people of the world. We must read the word of God. We must love the word of God. If you are not a reader, you at least you are a hearer. I am not too good with reading. I don't like reading too much. But I have a voracious appetite for listening. So I can listen to 20 messages a day. There is no situation that can bend me. It's not possible. None can take my laughter. Ask my wife. She's been with me for almost 20 years. It's not possible. And can I tell you the truth? Things hit me. <laughs> I have things that hit me. If you hear some of them, you run. Because they say I talk too much. <laughs> but that's how I've been talking since, even before I got born again. And so I've been trying to change. It's not working. <laughs> the world builds you. Ilakapaya tushka. The world builds you. The world builds you. And when it builds you in your stomach, it will be like a river. It will be like a gusher. And when situation comes, gadash. It will begin to flow. It will begin to flow. Conspiracies will come. The world will begin to gush out. The more you put it in, the more it comes out when the need arises. And we will always have the need for the world. Say, I'm hungry for the world. Say, Father, feed me with your word till I hunger no more. In the name of Jesus. There were people of the world. There were people of prayer. There are people of prayer. Leviticus 6, 12, where I read, is purely about prayer. It said, let the fire on the altar not go out. It was a little bit difficult for them in those days, but it's easier for us now. We can pray all manners of prayers. All manners of prayers. We can pray in tongues for 20 hours. La kapataya. Ekande boko shataka. Barush kapaya katulagande. I am pressed from all sides, but I will not be cast down. Edu ekapa ikatoshka parika. As I go into this week, I declare that I am on top. Let them come. I will stand. Matushke parikatu barakate kata. We pray. All manner of prayers. Nobody has the advantage like us. It's a great advantage. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Don't say I don't have a prayer point. You don't need a prayer point. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in mysteries. Ekita banka tulaga. The more you pray, then he'll begin to drop things. As you start in the Holy Ghost, he will now begin to drop things for you to pray. That is when the prayer point will come. In the name of Jesus. It's time to pray. Stand up for two minutes. Stand up for two minutes. Stand up for two minutes. Open your mouth and let's blast in tongues. Eteke pakatayash. Rebados, embra kataligados, repa papaya katakates. Demons are flying off. Freedom is coming upon the house in the name of Jesus. De katakate, e katakate. Inordinate desires, inordinate affections dying off. Addictions broken off. Pakataya, fire upon you, fire upon you. E ketuyas, reka pakatayas, lebresh keregeresh. Get to Gabarashka. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. You say, I don't have a prayer point. Not a problem. First Corinthians 14 2. So when you pray to God in this manner, you are praying directly to God and you are praying mysteries. In the spirit, we speak mysteries. Please be seated. It's time to pray. And can I tell you what the Lord said for me to tell you? You want to hear it? It's time to diminish prayer for personal things. I heard it clearly. It's time to diminish prayer for personal things. 
This is what I believe. You may not be there yet. You will never catch me praying for myself more than one minute. It has never happened. Because I grew up with a father who kept his promises. The only thing my father, Honorable Stephen Akubo, of blessed memory, promised me that he did not give to me was an aeroplane he promised me <laughs> when I was like seven. He didn't buy that aeroplane for me before he died. But I knew he cannot afford it. He couldn't afford it. But every other thing he promised, he did. He promised all of us that if you want to have a first degree, unless he dies, you will get it. All of us were 13 from three mothers, except the one who said, I don't want to go to school, and the one who did uh, NCE. Everybody got a degree. We have a professor in the house. We discovered later that the reason he had only two trousers at one time was because of school fees. There was no, like family worship center, there's a specific date. Your, your allowance must arrive in your school. Whether you're in the University of Portacourt or you're in anywhere, your school fees must arrive. He didn't care. He wore one trouser. So growing up from such a father, I don't pray for things. I look at scriptures. What has he promised? He said, if you do this, I will do this. I just go and do that. I trust his integrity. He will keep his promise. I will just do. Family worship center, it's time to de-emphasize on praying for me. For me. It's time to pray. Father, give me boldness to preach. Give me boldness to heal. Give me boldness to cast out demons. Father, give me boldness to preach with power. Give me boldness to heal with power. Give me boldness to cast out devil. Give me boldness to say no to sin. Give me boldness to speak to the wicked. Somebody say, give me boldness. Do not worry for clothes, for food, for this, for that. But seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. And I will. Seek me first. And I will. Church, that is the source of fire. And when this kind of fire begins to burn, they will come to watch. And when they come to watch, they will stay. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. It's time to pray. And as we pray, we become an empowered people. We become an empowered people. The Holy Spirit will begin to infuse us with strength. Infuse us with power. Infuse us with the anointing. And you begin to hear certain things from God. That will shake you. One day, one day, something bad was going to happen to me. God is too good though. Something bad was going to happen in about a month's time. I came into the kitchen in the morning and I heard loudly, I will give men as ransom for your life. And I kept it. When that thing began to happen, I said, it's finished. It's finished. If they insist, it's their trouble. If they insist. We become empowered. Untouchable, indestructible. You think it's a nonsense thing to be born again? We have become new, brand new species of human beings. If any man be in Christ, he's a new species, brand new species of human being. He has entered the God kind of life. So it's the more we know in the place of prayer, the more we know from the world, the more we are able to exercise it. And that is why in Christianity, God is not angry with anybody. Somebody can become saved yesterday, tomorrow he becomes big. Somebody has been saved for 20 years and he's still crawling. Why? In Christianity, is let it be to you. And what are the things that builds faith? These things. These things. These things. We become empowered people. They were a people of obedience. Not the obedience we are taking right now. <laughs> Carnal people. <laughs> if my people are willing and obedient, they will eat the good of the land. I have discovered that Muslims obey their own God more than us. 
because we have all kinds of interpretations. But it's in the place of obedience that fire comes. One of the most powerful sermons I heard when I came was obedience, the master key. I still have them. Some of you need to come to the church office and ask for the things that is making us talk like this. Obedience, master key to manifestations. There are like two different types. Obedience, obedience. We don't negotiate God's instructions. We don't. You cannot negotiate the instruction of somebody who knows more than you. Who is more powerful than you. And then to top it all, somebody who loves you. There are many reasons why it's easy for me to follow God. Number one, I know, I am not in doubt that he knows more than me. <laughs> and then I know that he loves me. When somebody knows more than you and they love you, whatever they say, don't negotiate. Don't. Don't. We must become people of obedience. But some of us are saying, I don't know what he has said. Now lie, you are lying. A lot of them are very simple here. Very simple and straightforward. Give. Don't forsake the assembling of one another. So on Friday, when you feel like chilling at home, and there's a gathering of brethren, what do you do? Don't forsake. It's very simple. Christianity is the simplest lifestyle. Powerful, yet simple. That is why I said, do not let the simplicity of the gospel beguile you like Satan beguiled Eve. It's too simple. It doesn't take any complicated thing. So on Friday, there's prayer meeting, which is gathering of the brethren. And you are feeling like chilling. You go there, do not forsake the assembly of brethren. Especially as you see the day. So you tell yourself, Kai, the Bible says I shouldn't forsake. So I'm going to church. What have you done? You have obeyed. And because you have obeyed, what have you done? The good of the land. So you do your part, he does his part. Glory to God. Somebody say, I have received grace to obey. To obey, they had zero tolerance for sin. Zero. I like that zero. There is no small sin. There is no small sin. But he said something last week that was very scriptural. Once in a while, the best of us may err. But for us, it should not be a lifestyle. And you should not enjoy it. Did you hear that? Yeah. Once in a while, because we are still here, we will sing. Like he said, he was in a, a Biokuta or somewhere. But because he didn't, he didn't want to go and look for anybody's parents-in-law. He said, I'm in Lagos. Those kinds of things can happen to us once in a while. Eh? For example, you know that pastor is going to say, go and visit Auntie Reggie. And then you, you know she won't say, go and visit Auntie Reggie if you are in Kubwa. But if you are somewhere around, we say, you say, so pastor say, where are you? You say, I'm in Kubwa. <laughs> are you getting it? Those kinds of things will happen. But when we sin as Christians, if we sin as Christians, we don't enjoy it and we don't stay in it. That is how you know that you are a Christian. If you are enjoying sin and you are lingering in it, question your Christianity. Question it. If you are enjoying it and continuing in it, question your 